I'm adding different audio sources to the game object. If I had to add all of these one by one through the add component button, it would be a bit of a mess. Hey, what's up guys? So if you've ever worked with Unity, you'll know that Unity is based on this component system where you click a button in the inspect panel and you can add different components to your game object. So here on this ball, for example, I might click it and um, select a rigid body component and maybe like a circle collider and this terrain might have, let's say, a uh, polygon collider. So when I run this scene, all these components work together and they get added. So what if you've come from a more of a programming centric background where you don't really want to be dealing with these um, buttons in the Unity IDE where you prefer to kind of approach it with code. And there's reasons to want to do this and I'll get into those in just a moment. But first of all, I'll show you how to approach that. So I'll just undo some of those things I added. Okay, so you can see here I have no components added except for the sprite renderer. So these are effectively just images. All right, so I'm going to just create a new game object and I'll just call it game manager because I'm just going to be using it to um, hold a single script and add component, uh, new script, game manager, I'm going to call it game manager script, create and add. So I'm just going to start by adding some public game object variables to hold the ball and the terrain. Terrain. And in the start function, I'm going to now add the components I need. Let's look at this, add component. And I'll say rigid body 2D. And here I'll add a circle collider. And then what you can do now that I've defined those um, components, I can actually manipulate them. So I can say ball dot uh, get component rigid body 2D. So now I can tap into the rigid body too. I can change the mass or maybe the um, gravity scale. I'll set to like four. And then for the terrain, I'll just say add component polygon collider 2D. Right, so now I'll just quickly select that and drag these references in so that that'll all work. So I'll hit run. And look at that, I'll just pause. And you can see now those different components have been added dynamically. And the terrain has a polygon collider. So very useful, but in this particular example, it's not the most practical because we may actually want to know if there's a rigid body or box collider on the inspector. It's kind of handy to be able to see that over here. But there are situations um, where it can get very, very busy on that inspector panel having a lot of different arbitrary components, especially with sound managers where you have multiple different audio sources that link to different things. And I'll show you an example of that in my own game. So you can see here in my game Blood and Mead, I have this sound manager, which has two different audio source components added. One's for like the main um, uh, music and one is like for a, a wind loop. But when I run this um, scene here, boom, look at all these different audio sources that have been added. And each of these different audio sources is responsible for like a different sound in the scene. Maybe this kind of pig and its <laughs> squeal, or maybe like the, the footsteps of the player, or maybe <clears throat> the grunts. And as you know, audio sources can only play one sound at a time. So you need a lot of different audio sources. But if I had to add all of these one by one through the add component button, it would be a bit of a mess. And then I'd be dragging them in and assigning them to different properties. So it's no good. So this here is the code that I use in my own sound manager that adds those components. And I here I'm, I've got a for loop. And in that loop, I'm adding different audio sources to the game object. I then store those audio sources in a list that I kind of add to and pull from on demand as I need. So hopefully you found this video useful and it's given you some ideas of how you can use that add component syntax for your own projects and approach um, some challenges in different ways. So give the video a like if you found it useful and hit the sub button if you haven't already. I have plenty more game dev tutorials, um, Unity, uh, tip bits and tips and things like that that I think you'll uh, all find useful. And thanks to my Patreon supporters up here for supporting this channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. See you all in the next video.